Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel to Home Savvy Central. It's a channel for home sellers and homeowners, and also lots of information for home buyers because a lot of the sellers are home buyers as well. So welcome to the channel. It's a beautiful day today in Southern California. I'm assuming it's about 75, 80 degrees, and I've been inside all day. But we have an interesting topic and a very exciting topic. One of the topics that is one of my favorite topics in real estate, which is why do homes don't sell? And then they sell afterwards. So what needs to be done by the seller? What needs to be done by the agents for making, for making it to sell at a right price? But that to say, even in this market where the activity is very high, where the inventory is very low, even today, and I'll show you, I have a chart. Even in this market, homes don't sell. So we will analyze why homes don't sell and what can be done about it and what your agent can help you do that. And to make this program exciting, I have a guest, a special guest with me today. Uh, let me bring him on and I'll introduce you to him. Raful, can you Hi. see me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Hi, everybody. This is Praful Tucker. I've known Praful for almost 15 years. A very good friend of mine, a very professional realtor. He's up in the Boston area. Uh, if I know a tech savvy agent and who's up to date on all the trends about the real estate market and the statistics and homes and all that, that's Praful. That's why I called him over here. So welcome Praful. If you want to just take a minute to introduce yourself and say something that I might not have said. Introduce oh, well, yourself. Yep. So, as uh, Mahesh mentioned, Mike mentioned uh, Raful Tucker. We know each other for 15 years, and uh, the reason we connect pretty well is uh, very simple. Uh, both of us obviously love technology, but both of us have one simple goal in mind to help our client to the fullest. Uh, about me, I am uh, from uh, Metro Boston. I've been here for so long time uh, and I'm working with a local real estate brokerage. My details will be there in uh, the comment in the basically description down there. You can see that whenever you want to reach me, you can definitely reach me. It's not necessary that you have to be in only Boston area. It can be anywhere in United States. Obviously, Mahesh will be easier to reach when you, if you are in uh, California and I can definitely help you even more when you're in Massachusetts. So uh, my basic thing, you can reach us and what we are going to discuss today is about why some of the homes don't sell and what we can do our best to fix it. Right. Uh, oh yeah, and I'm never too busy for any of your referrals if I don't say that. <laughs> then you know the realtor that you are. Just to let you know, Praful has been in business for such a long time. And unlike other realtors who spend a lot of money on Zillow or newspaper ads, yes, I said newspaper ads because agents still do that. Uh, Praful, most of his business, I would say 95% of his business, comes from people he knows, people he has served, etc. So he's a very diligent agent and his business comes from referral. So, Prafu, let's get started. But before we talk about why homes don't sell, I want to talk about my market over here. And I want you to mention about your market. So at least we know what's happening because I don't know what's happening in the East Coast. Sure. I know that Florida, due to circumstances, is taking a beating right now. From what I understand, uh, the inventory is up 40 percent over there. Home prices are drastically coming down. There's a lot of people from Florida moving out of Florida. By the way, sorry to hear about the hurricane. If you're watching now live or if you're watching after this, you know, we, we understand that you had the hurricane. So sorry to hear about that. Hopefully you'll have some support from the government and the state to get you where you want to be. I see a lot of losses, not just in Florida, but Georgia and North Carolina and South Carolina. So we do see that, but wish we can do something about it. So talking about the market here in Southern California, I just want to touch on it because it is important to see why homes don't sell, even in a hot market right now. So I want to go back and say that, yes, Southern California, especially Orange County, by the way, I'm in Anaheim Hills, uh, Orange County, California, the city where Disneyland is. So it's the same city, but it's called Anaheim Hills. Market is very strong. Uh, inventory has 
gone up a little bit. Uh, homes are taking maybe one or two more weeks to sell than last year, but the home prices are not dropping. In fact, they're stabilizing or they are still going up in Orange County and Riverside County and LA County and pretty much if I can say the same for San Diego County. So what I'm saying is the market is still strong. It's not like Austin. It's not like Florida. It's not like Palm Springs. It's not like Pigeon Fork in Tennessee uh, where the market has dropped. The medium home prices I'm hearing has dropped anywhere from 10 to 20 percent in the cities that I mentioned. But in Orange County, I don't see a drop overall. So my concern is that in a market like this, why do homes don't sell? But before we talk about that, Prof, tell us about your market, what's happening. And I don't mean just Boston area, but somewhere in the East Coast where you may know more about what's going on than, than I do, or I haven't kept up much over there. So more or less, uh, it's similar uh, to what you have. Uh, I see a difference. And when people read the news, they say that, oh my God, homes are not selling. That's not mm -hmm. true. The inventory, we go by how many months inventory is left in a specific market. Usually, it's by default, we call six months of an inventory supposed to be a balanced market. Anything less than six months of an inventory is supposed to be considered as a buyer's, uh, as a seller's market, and uh, more than six months is buyer's market. Now, last few years have been phenomenal, and perhaps uh, there's no comparison to it, which has been since COVID days, where inventory has been very low, and most of the home usually sell in less than, I would say, 15 days. Many of them, in fact, sell in about seven days. So ideally speaking, we are in a high seller market. And what we see is a big difference, which is coming up right now. And I see a big difference from people's perspective, consumer's perspective, where they say that, OK, uh, now homes are not selling for 30 days. Wow. Think of it this way, that in a balanced market, homes don't sell for about six months or so, whereas we are selling still in 30 days. Uh, and that basically is the status of market over here, that we have still about, say, 50% or 60% less than what our regular inventory is in market. We have just about 4,000 homes on market at this point of a time when I'm talking to you which should have been roughly about 15 to 20 grand, 20,000 homes on market. So yes, a situation is still the same as what you see it in um, West Coast. And I guess uh, there are some top, uh, some speakers, they have identified about 10 markets which are slowing down drastically. Mm -hmm. And I think Florida is one of them, but let's talk about uh, what's happening in our market. Now, we'll obviously try to cover as much as we know about the other market also, but let's see why. In fact, let, this is a good segue. Why people think that this is a good market? The reason it's a good market is that homes don't stay on market for long. And that definitely gives the seller an indication that, hey, I don't need an agent and let me put it home on the market. All right. And Coming back to our topic, even if they put it on the market, their homes don't sell and mm -hmm. stay for two, three months on market. So now you can take it over from there, Mahesh. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. It, it's funny that this is happening and it has always happened. I've been in the business for 25 years and one of my specialty was, not anymore, my specialty was in my beginning of my career, I used to call sellers and say, hey, I noticed your home did not come on the market. How can I help you? And you'd be surprised how many people or how many sellers release their home right away or within 30 days or within one year. Either they change the price of the home, they fix something or they change the realtors. Most of them do change their realtors, change their marketing and change the approach. So it's normal. One of the reasons before we got, get to the real reason why homes expire, one of the reasons a lot of homes expire is because the seller is not really, really motivated. I've had some buyers when I call, when I used to call them and say, hey, Mr. Mrs. Seller, do you want to sell your home? Do we have a buyer? And they say, well, 
I don't want to sell, but if you get me a million bucks, I'll sell it, right? So there are sellers who think they can play with the market and say, you know what? If I get my price, I'll sell it. I don't have to move. But if you get me a million dollars and maybe the house is what, 700 or 800 and they want a million dollars and that's a figure of speech, then they sell. So there are a lot of sellers who are not really motivated to sell. There are a lot of sellers who just are testing to market, are testing the market and say, hey, what kind of price can I get? Or they might have a neighbor sell a house for a million dollars. And by the way, I'm using a million dollars because in Anaheim Hills, a million dollars is your average home. And I know in certain areas that may be very high. In certain areas, I, the medium home price is $435,000 in USA. I just use a million dollars because Anaheim Hills, the medium price range is about 1.3. So going back, a seller might say, hey, my neighbor sold his house for a million dollars or her house for a million dollars and they have a pool or they have a view and they have a lot of upgrades and the seller may not have anything and say, well, let me try selling it too. And they do all the marketing they can. They do everything they can, but it does not sell because he's, he or she is not motivated. So going back to why homes do not sell, Prafool, I'll let you answer it. I know that sellers don't like it when we say that. And I did a video 10 years ago saying that there are three main reasons a home don't sell. And I'll talk about that. But there's actually 10 or 15 reasons. I want to talk about five things. And I know that when sellers, potential sellers, will hear this, they won't like it. But if I ask you, Prafool, as an agent, what's the number one reason a home does not sell? All right. <laughs> I'll give you a ticket. To this <laughs> you you put me on a spot. <laughs> and I'm just going to give you maybe a different answer. I mean, I can always have a detailed answer. But right. right now, I'm just going to say two points. The first one is uh, they have refused to work with a professional. And the second one is look at the number one. Yep. Yep. It's the price, right? right? It's the price. It's always the yeah. price. Yeah. Because. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let me elaborate on that. Uh, and obviously, we'll give perhaps some more detailed reasons uh, on why uh, the homes yeah. won't sell. Mm -hmm. But uh, for any reason, if the home doesn't sell, is simply there's a perspective which seller has for price, terms, condition, and the one that is the buyers look at the home in the existing market and look at the price, terms, and condition. And if they don't match, it simply doesn't sell. And the reason why, number one, which I said that, oh, they didn't hire the professional is to assess the market and guide you in the right direction so that your home can sell at the price, perhaps what you want. And again, we are there to guide you in the direction where your home will be sold and you'll be happy in your newer home, which could be. Maybe if you are having a mansion and you want to downsize, that could be one. Or if you're just a, if you just want the first home and now you want to grow up. I, in fact, I help so many of them. So it's it's very 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 simple. Get the professional guidance, and I mean, actually, I'm getting tempted to give some examples, but let's just focus on uh, the current talk. Uh, so, so to answer your question, Sir Mahesh. It doesn't sell because uh, they don't have the professional guidance is what I would put it right. as in a summary. And obviously we can have corollaries, one, number one, no price, number two, didn't appeal to the market, number three, couldn't attract, didn't do the proper marketing and perhaps so on and so forth. In fact, I wish I had not noted down all the points, but it's all up here. Yeah, and there's so many, right? So yeah, let's go so back many. to the price. And I, I like your reasoning that they did not consult a professional. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about a realtor, right? And not an appraiser, yes. or attorney, or yes. accountant. So, yes. But the bottom line is it's the realtor. And you know what? I'll admit to you, I've sold lots of homes, and my specialty is more working with the sellers. Of course, I work with the buyers too. And in this market, I've been working with a lot of buyers. And I would admit that I have listed some homes and they did not sell, despite our professional opinion. But here's what happens. First of all, whether you're a buyer watching or a seller watching, by the way, just to let you know, so I don't forget, if you have any comments, 
or questions, please put them in the comments. Praful or I will answer to you live. And if you're watching this video after as a recording, please ask questions or share any comments, what's happening in your neighborhood. We'll be glad to interact with you. So please do that. So going back to the price, Praful, like you said, you have to talk to your professional, but I've talked to some professional. I'll give an example. Let me switch to a buyer right now. I have an offer out. The, the, the listing price was 1.27. We wrote an offer for 1.15 because the buyer wanted to come low. I told the buyer, look, this is a market. It's a hot market. Homes are selling. The buyer right now is at 1.18 and the sellers are stuck at 1.2, coming down from 1.25. So we have a $12,000 difference. Despite me telling my good buyer, he's an all cash buyer. He's moving from out of state. He's not budging with the $12,000. Me knowing that that house is worth 1.2. And why do I know that house is worth 1.2? Well, the house is only two years old. The seller paid over 1.2 for the house. After she moved in, she did landscaping, she did this, she did drape, she did decor, spent a lot of money. And now when she's selling, she's gonna spend a lot of money closing costs, right? So sometimes what we say doesn't matter. So coming back to the seller, I can come to you, let's say, Prapul, you're a seller, and say, hey, Mr. Tucker, you know, I'm glad you called me, blah, blah, blah. And we go through the presentation and say, based on what's happening in the area, based on the three or four homes that sold in your neighborhood, homes that are like yours, and based on what's happening with the market, whether it's going up or down, I'm going to re recommend that we list your price as a million dollars. And you may say, no, I want 1.1. Our job as professional realtors is to guide you, give you information, then you decide. At the end of the day, the sellers make the decision, no matter what we say, just like the buyer, he's not budging. And I'm saying, if you want the house, it's exactly what they're looking for. He has five criterias and this house has it all, but he's not budging for $12,000. You know, it doesn't make sense, but that's how it is. So similarly, sellers don't always listen to professional because sellers know more about their house than that's true. So what do you do when the sellers just don't listen to you and you're giving them all the information and yes, Agents do list it overpriced. I've done that myself because we don't know the market. And the reason we don't know the market is because in the house, let's say they did flooring and they did the trimming and they did upgrades. We don't know how much more they're going to pay. So we test it out. So maybe we list the house 30, 40, 50,000 higher than the comps are. And then it doesn't sell. So it's a tough situation, Purple, if you want to elaborate on that. It's not always they hear what we say, especially on a price. So... A very good point you have. Ideally, we as a professional have a job to give you an idea that this is what the market says. And we can give you a number. It could be 1.1 million, it could be 1.2 million. Uh, and I always tell my clients, whether, they, whether it's a seller or a buyer, that price is what you tell we are there to guide you, but you are the boss. You want to basically specify, and within the reasonable period, if you want to sell your home, this is what we recommend. Uh, you'll be surprised to know, uh, and I don't know, and I wish I had some more slides which I could have shared with you, but uh, obviously you can shoot me an email later on. We call it as a pricing triangle. If you happen to price your home, 5% above the market, you are going to lose about 30% of the buyer pool. Think of it as six times more negative effect on your home should you decide to sell a home whose professional opinion is 1 million and now you want to sell it as 1.05 million, hardly 50,000 more than what it is. Mm -hmm. And think of it that at 1 million, you would have had, say, 100 buyers. Now you have to deal with only 70 buyers. So by doing that, you are reducing the competition by one third. Absolutely, yes. And what this simply means is that, and this is what I've seen, more or less when we have a suggested price, I expect there will be at least about 20 plus buyers who would visit the home on the first weekend. And uh, some of the standards which we follow, 
in terms of showing, and I might be perhaps uh, sharing more detail as a professional, is that when we have about 10 showings, we would expect at least one reasonable offer. And if we have 20 showings, we will have a multiple offers, which can directly or indirectly benefit the seller. Mm -hmm. And again, the moment you were two sellers, it is very likely that at least price of 1 million, your home can sell at 1.1 million versus by listing at 1,050,000, you may end up selling your home at 975K. Mm -hmm. There's a huge, huge, huge uh, percentage of the reason why homes don't sell is, and I mean, I used to jokingly tell people there are three reasons why homes don't sell. Number one, price. Number two, price. Number three, price. All right. I've heard, I've heard that many times before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, so, so obviously the condition of the home is important. Uh, how you negotiate the deal is also important, but price is most important. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you must have seen some of the homes which are kind of tear down homes. They also sell, but they get their own price. Mm -hmm. uh, always remember, the price is one number, which is there in seller's mind and is there in the buyer's mind. The buyers is going to do so many uh, things. They're going to check what's happening in market, what's sold in market, what are the conditions of the homes that are sold in the market. And based on that, a reasonable and a serious buyer is going to make an offer. Mm -hmm. And if your price is above that, lot above that, Chances are they will not even dare to make an offer. But if it is in, within a striking distance, they will make an offer, which would be fair. And yes, I agree with uh, Mahesh. Some of the buyers just want to forget everything and say that I want the home for 12000 less. It happens. It happens. Trust me, it happens. Uh, and obviously, I have a different counseling session with buyer, which we can, you know, I can perhaps elaborate on that a little bit later. But remember, if the buyer makes little lower offer, there's always a negotiation that you can do with the buyer. And uh, jokingly or not jokingly, we have done thousands of negotiation. Mm -hmm. Even if seller feels that they are the best negotiator, I can tell you the negotiation which we can do, knowing the conditions of the buyer is perhaps nowhere compared to what seller can do. The only reason seller can have is, okay, I want this price and that's it. And that is not called a negotiation. Negotiation should have one simple strategy and that's win-win. Mm -hmm. You want to win, you want your buyers to win. All right. Now, uh, coming back to the point uh, before even my slips into the next uh, topic. And I would tell that buyer who is really worried about $12,000. Right. Okay. Uh, remember, the buyers buy in, a, in that high price, but they also look at another number, and that is how much I'm going to pay monthly for this price. Mm -hmm. Okay. Think of it this buyer who's trying to sell, sell say, $12,000. Rates have gone down by 50 base point. When they made an offer at X number, the monthly payments were hypothetically say 10,000. And now they are still seeking the same number and they're paying perhaps much less. I mm -hmm. would rather tell buyer that, that 12,000 is better put in for the offer because now even after paying $12,000, you're going to pay maybe $500 less than what you initially wanted to pay for the house. So Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That, that might take again. Right, right. Uh, no. You can definitely, you know. Yeah. No, and, and understand. And in this case, it, it doesn't work in this case because he's an all-cash buyer. So it's an all-cash buyer. Yeah. But, but, I, but in general, I know what you're saying. Because yeah. for every $10,000, depending on the interest rate, you may save $100, $200. So yeah. in, in the long run, if you were buying a $400,000 house, which is a medium sales price, and if it was five or $10,000, 
it doesn't really make that much of a difference on your payment, especially with the lower the interest rate. Right now, it's what? It's almost 6% compared to a year and a half ago, it was 78 So you may pay the extra 12000 going back to the example, but you're saving for 30 years on a point, a point and a half. So it goes a long, long way. But the end of the day, coming back, you know, it's always the price. Like you said earlier, you know, I can have a house in bad shape, bad carpet, stinking. I've got five pets in there. My yard is messed up because I have medical issues. I'm a senior. I could not work. I could not maintain the house. And the house next door sold for a million dollars. I may have to sell it for 900. It'll sell. It may not sell for a million, but it'll sell for 900 because I understand as a seller that, hey, somebody is going to come in paint carpet, change the bathroom, change the toilets, do the gardening. You know, my pool is empty. It needs work. It may sell for 800. Got so it. there's a price for every home and there's a buyer for every home. The buyer may buy your house for $800,000 because he wants to put his color. He wants to get rid of the pool. You know, he wants to get rid of the trees. So they'll pay. So for every house, there's a buyer. That's so true. You know, I, I, I had a house for sale. This is kind of like a joke. And he was a car salesman and I sold his house and it was, by the way, an expired listing. I called him up. I remember his name is Tony. Uh, he could not sell his house. And this was about seven years ago. I called him up. Hey, Tony, your house did not sell. Is there anything I can do to help you sell? If you're thinking about selling, long story short, I got the listing. And he was a car salesman. He said, you know what? I shouldn't say it because it, it, it's for every seat, there is a... I won't say the word, but what was saying that for every car seat there is, and the word starts with an A. <laughs> so for every house, there's a buyer. For every Hello. car seat in the car, there is a a guy who's gonna a sit bump. down on the seat. So I won't say that, right? But that was a joke, you know, coming back. And that it's it's funny that I thought of the joke and the, the seller was at a, uh, a listing that did not sell. And he was going through a divorce. He was going through a short sale. Um, it was a disaster. Finally got rid of it and he moved on, you know. So should we move on Prafur, now from the price and see other reasons why, just for information, why homes don't sell and just kind of for, so at least if a seller is there or if a buyer is there, they want to know, well, how come this house does not sell? And the first thing the buyer thinks about is, oh, something's wrong with the house. Nothing's wrong with the house. Usually it's the price was too expensive. And also one more thing I wanted to mention, you mentioned earlier, and I'm glad you brought up the triangle because I've seen that and it's very true that for every 3% higher or 5% higher or 10% higher, at 10%, you lose 50% of your buyers. So true. So that was a very good stat. Um, and I wanted the buyer to know that if you're a buyer, because if you're a home seller, you're going to be a buyer. One thing that the sellers and the buyers has to know is that if the, the longer the house sits on the market, so you may start high price, way high, and it's going to take you two, three, four, five, six months to sell in this market where they're selling for 30 days. So the longer it takes you to sell the market, the less quality buyer you may get and the lesser price you may get. So your objective, I think good homes, marketed right, priced right, negotiated right, should sell within 30 to 45 days in this market. You know, the you longer want to it be... takes you, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead, yeah. Finish no, no, go ahead, yeah. yeah. To the seller, whether it's a sale by owner or anybody else, if you want to be in a driver's seat and have the sale based on your terms and conditions, price it right. And you are likely to attract more than one buyer. It's similar to, uh, you know, dropping the fishing rod at a point where you will find so many fishes come and try to eat that uh, food. So remember, if you price it right, you are likely to get better number of buyers. I mean, I would say bigger pool and in multiple offer scenario, you might end up paying uh, at perhaps higher than that. Mm -hmm. uh, I always, in fact, surprisingly enough, uh, uh, I always recommend my seller to price the home at about one to two percent below, mm -hmm. not drastically low. Right. Okay. And I end up uh, on an average, I get up get about eight to ten offers for the offer. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, his, uh, uh, I mean, I think he's sharing all the details, Mahesh. So you can just check.
check check on that. No, no, go ahead, finish up. I just want to show you the next point. I, I wasn't supposed yeah. to put it up there, but it just popped up there. But yeah, now so talking. I would say, yeah, price is obviously number one. There are other uh, terms and conditions, but before we go to that, uh, maybe use maybe uh, he can perhaps uh, throw some lights on that. Whenever the home is sold by the sale by owner, remember, and this is proven statistically for so many years mm -hmm. that. The net which the seller gets as a sale by owner is on an average 10 to 15,000 less than what they would have got it had they worked with a realtor, a professional. Even after paying the fees to that professional, you would end up getting less. Uh, and in fact, I have a very, very, very live recent example, and uh, without naming a name, mm -hmm. uh, and I hope when he <laughs> he watches this recording, he would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Uh, he obviously bought the home through me and uh, we we just, I'm a good negotiator. We could get a very good deal on the home. He bought it. Uh, and uh, we had an agreement that I'm going to list on specific day provided he is not going to get someone directly to work with him. Uh, and turns out to be on the last day itself, he got someone. And I said, is this the price this buyer is giving it to you? Obviously, I came to know about it a little later. Mm -hmm. But based on all the market analysis I had done, I could have sold that home for, if not more, and again, if not more, at least 30 grand more yeah. Yeah. than that. And it was a small condo. Right. So trust me, this basically encompasses all, all the additional commissions and any expenses that we would incur, even after all those things he would have made, if not more, at least 10 grand more right. than what he yep. got it. So that, that's another thing. Yes, I have no, no, no issues if you want to sell your own on your home. In fact, I try to help some of the sale by owners also by providing some material saying that you do X, Y, Z. But remember, no matter what, the statistics for last, Mm -hmm. 100 years say yep. that on an average, uh, the seller who want to sell their home on their own without having a professional service uh, would perhaps end up getting much less net in their hand. Right. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why and, you need to listen to a realtor. They know what they're doing. They'll yep. get you more price. You know, so anyway, we won't go there. But let me show you the reason I want to show you this slide profile quickly and show it to sure. the people who are watching is that. We kept saying, or I said that, hey, homes are expiring. But this, I went to my multiple listing service today, and I'm part of the Pacific West Association of Realtors. And I typed in, in my CRMLS, which I belong to, which is the multiple listing service, CRMLS. And I typed in, in the county of Orange County, how many expired or canceled listings were there in the last seven days, right? Um, and it shows in this market, this is today. I did this this morning. It shows there are 783 Home that have canceled, wow. canceled, or expired in the last, I believe it's 30 days. I, I may be seven days or 30 days, but regardless, in this market, hot market, where there's a shortage of inventory, historic shortage of inventory, homes are expiring. And if you, you know, I can't, but if you see for the audience, if you look at the red arrows on the right, I don't know if you can see those. If you go yeah. right on the prices, LC price, the red arrows. Profil, you know this, but in, in Orange County, the red arrows means there was a price drop on those listings Got and they still expired. That means the, the, the first one, it says 1.25000. I don't know, but they could have been asking 1.3. They dropped it to 1.25 and it still did not sell. But this shows you that marketing is very important, but more than marketing, your price has to be right. Got you know, so, so I just want to show that, that this is happening in real time. And just didn't want to say that, hey, for the converse conversation topic, saying that, hey, homes don't sell. So I, I do want to mention that, you know, so. Yeah. So let me and, do that. And think of it this way. Mm -hmm. Since you mentioned about marketing, MLS is one of the best way to market the home. But as I said, it's one of the best way. But mm -hmm. think of it as a professional. We market your home on many, many, many other platforms, which you, you can't even imagine, okay? Uh, many of us uh, do the 3D tours, 
the drone tools. These are kind of just the recent one, but then at the same time, we try to promote the home. Uh, I mean, I run lots of Facebook ads, YouTube ads, just for making sure that uh, we target the real audience, which is a potential buyer of your home. And in that process, we end up getting roughly about three times more traffic than mm -hmm. what a sale by owner would be able to get it. Right. Uh, in fact, the one example I just gave you had a limited pool of, uh, we have a six degree of suppression and we assume that all of us know about 216 people. Uh, so he had a small pool of 216, which he went at, he went one more step further and tried to get it roughly about 216 by 216 or something like that, which obviously doesn't happen. Uh, but he had a pool of say thousand people from which he circulated the detail of his home, got one buyer. Now think of it, 1000 people looking at the home versus roughly about say 30,000 of them looking at the home. Mm -hmm. What do you think will get is going to happen? Right. Obviously, when there are 30,000 people, there'll be more eyes on it and them it's more likely that they're going to make an offer. Multiple offers means competition. Competitions means price driving right, up. Right, right. Absolutely. And that is very, very challenging for the sale by owner. Irrespective of, uh, in fact, most of the MLSs do allow their home to be listed in multiple listing service. Uh, for, for sale by owners do get an opportunity to list the homes in uh, multiple listing service. But again, that's just one avenue. And yes, it does. They, allow they, they don't allow that. They don't. They don't allow that. Oh, no. okay. Yeah. So, so there are different guidelines, different right. rules everywhere. We so have. On, I wanted to move on a little bit. Sure. And I wanted to make sure this is important. I don't forget this. I wanted to. Sure, 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 sure. That, and I want to give them facts about expired listings. Okay. There we so go. So I know in this market. So so in this market nationwide, I did some research and found out that about in this market, which is a hot market, there's only seven percent of the homes that do not sell. But let's look at the normal market, which I think will be heading hopefully in the next one or two years. In a normal market, it could be anywhere from 15 to 30 percent, depending on the area. So I wanted to make that out so that you know that expired listings right now or canceled out are less than 10 percent. But usually they're over anywhere from 20 to 40 percent. During the recession in 2008, 30, 40 percent was a normal number. Right now, because there's less inventory, it's less than 10 percent. The normal market is anywhere from 20 to 30 percent. But here are some facts I want to mention, um, especially if you're a buyer or a seller watching this. Um, and this was a report done. Um, and I want to read this out that, you know, the market, when a listing expires, right? What it tells the seller is that the market rejects that house. That's what the research said. And this is how you want to think about it. Then it says, in other words, the market did not accept the marketing effort the price, the condition, the location, or a combination of these areas, or all four of them. So either they don't like the price, the, and we're talking about the market, and in this market, who's the market? The buyer. So if there's a strong buyer, he didn't like the price, or he didn't like the marketing effort because he never saw it advertised, he didn't see an open house, he didn't see a virtual tour, or he saw the staging photos on online because 95% of all the buyers go online, and if you have, crappy pictures and the agent did not recommend staging or sprucing up the home the buyer rejected right away so there was no marketing effort done or maybe the condition was not good home selling any condition but you have to ask for that price so if you're asking for a million dollars and the condition is no good you're not going to get it and the fourth thing they talks about is, is the location you know again location is if you're on a t street or if you're on a busy street and your yard backs to the busy street or you're on a flight path where planes take off and you're over there, there's bad locations out there. Even those homes sell, I've sold homes right over the uh, airline traffic where the planes take off and I've sold homes right behind these railroad tracks, but the price has to be right. So going back to it, if it does not sell, your house just got rejected, not only by the realtors, but also by the buyers. And the other, furthermore, what this research shows is that the good thing is that you can control two of these areas and that's talking to the seller. What's the two thing 
that the sellers can control out of the four things, they control the price and the condition. If the house is what we call a dog in our language, we call them dogs, right? Bad paint, bad carpet, bad yard. We can recommend, hey, Mr. Seller Prafur, you know, for you to get this price, you have purple color in one bedroom and you have pink in one and green. Make them all neutral color depending on, on your area. You, you have five pets, which is fine. But to sell, you may want to change the carpet. You got stains, blah, blah, blah. So bring the condition to better. But when it comes to realtors, and you had mentioned earlier, Profool, that the, your realtor controls a lot of things. The realtor controls two things, the marketing and the efforts. But you can do all the marketing in the world. You can do all, you can do open house for the whole year. If the house is million dollar overpriced, nobody's going to buy it. Yes. So you have to understand that that selling home requires four things, you know, price, marketing, condition, and location. And we only control two of it, and the sellers control two of that. So, and I'm not blaming the sellers and research shows that the number and there's 15 things why a house does not sell. When I did a video talk, going back to the video I did about 10 years ago, I was brand new on video and I tried one out and didn't know what I was talking about on video at that time. Video marketing was brand new. And I said, there's three reasons why home don't sell. The number one reason was, um, was pricing. The number two was marketing. And number three was motivation. So I want to go back to motivation and, and see what your take is on motivation when it comes to why. Because I can bring you an offer profile and if you decide not to sell, it doesn't matter. You're not going to sell. That reminds me of one incident where I just felt you know, it was not right. Uh, the condition of the home was terrible. I did all my marketing. I did get an offer also, but seller simply refused that. And then the seller eventually sold that home at price lot less than that. Uh, after I think trying a couple of more agents and all, uh, I happened to be in fact a good friend of the seller. So I asked him, why did you do that? I mean, I got you a lot better offer than that. Right. And his answer was very simple. He said, you know what? I was going through the short sale or some kind of a negotiation with bank that allowed me to stay in the home for free. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. All right. So motivation is the key. And I, I wish I could decode that that time. But remember one thing. Uh, you, if you are a seller and if you are really motivated, trust me, most of the real estate professionals who are doing the job right will able to tell you the price, number one, and they will have so many tools in the arsenal to market your home in such a way that most likely you are likely to get more than what perhaps has been listed for. In fact, the current states show that on an average in almost all the market, the homes are selling at over asking price. Okay. So yes, motivation is the key. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, you know, I would appreciate all the sellers be fair to the marketing, to their real estate professional. Eventually they are putting their heart into selling your home. They're taking weekends off. They're missing weddings. They did an open house. Uh, I remember when I was brand new um, and I, I never watched football. I was never a football fan. But on the Super Bowl day, there was also a wedding. And I was supposed to go to the wedding and the Super Bowl fan because this was, I belonged to this group, Toastmasters group, if you know what Toastmasters is. Yeah. It was our first Super Bowl. I was so excited, but then I also had to go to the wedding. So I was going to go to the Super Bowl and then leave after the half because I eat the food because I heard there was a lot of food. I've never been to a Super Bowl party. So my plan was to eat food and then go to the wedding because the wedding was in the late afternoon, evening. But then I got a call the day before. And back then, you know, this was 20 years ago, when a buyer calls, hey, I want to see this home. What did we do? Hey, I'll see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Because at that time, we didn't pre-qualify them or ask them questions, the, the consultation. Lately, we do that, right? We have to make them sign and all that. Long story short, I showed him homes. 
and he never bought. And he said, I just wanted to see in the area what the homes were going for. He wasn't really going to buy, but I was also brand new. So what I'm saying is realtors do a lot, a lot of sacrifice when, when you say, if you're not motivated, don't put your home on the market. Not only that, forget the realtors. Okay. We're, we're people who get paid. What about the buyer? He's seen homes, homes, homes. Then he picks your home. And if you're a seller, I'm talking to you as an example. I write an offer on your home. And then he find out that you're not going to get the price, which are the buyer is offering at that market price. In the meantime, he had a backup offer or another house that he wanted and somebody else buys it. So now the buyer did not get your home because you were not motivated and he offered you $800,000. Your house was worth eight hundred. dollars In the meantime, he had a second home. He lost that. So he lost two homes. So it also does, quote, damage time-wise and emotionally to the buyer, let alone the, the, the professional agents. So if you're not motivated, don't put it on the market, you know. Uh, and I'm, we're not saying that in a harsh way. Just this is why homes don't sell, you know. So, so I want to touch another different topic because you've mentioned it several times before, you know, and I've mentioned it several times. The number one reason why a home does not sell is the price. At the end of the day, it's always the price. Because believe me, I flipped a house in 2004. I bought a house and flipped it. Okay. You know what the condition was on that house? There was a fire attic in the house. In fact, what happened was that I put the house for sale and I didn't know because there's a fire in the attic, right? We didn't know that. I list the house. We go into escrow and it so happened that I was a listing agent, but I also find my own buyer. We do the inspection. And then the, the, the inspector calls me out to say, hmm, we got a problem. I said, yeah. what happened? He took me up the attic. He said there was a fire in there, electrical fire. And there was some damage there. And this happened four or five months ago. So there was no smell in there. And the buyers backed out. And then I put it back on the market saying that there was a fire, but nobody would buy it. No, nobody would buy it. Guess what? I bought it myself. I fixed it up and flipped it. So long story short, Price is a factor because knowing I told the seller that you've tried it three or four times to sell it. This is the price. If you want, I'll buy it myself. And I disclosed that I'm an agent and he knew that. And I bought the house at a reduced price and I fixed it up and sold it and made 40 grand back then in six months, which was a lot of money in 2004. So coming back to the price as an agent, what would you tell? And I'm also going to talk about this because if there's some buyers watching live or after, <clears throat> after this uh, recording on YouTube, is how do sellers, along with the help of agents, what are some of the things that can help them come up with the right price? What do you use as an agent, some of the things so you price it right and help the buyers or the sellers with it? If you want to talk some of the things about it. So a very good point. Uh, we usually have the trend on what's been happening in market, okay? At the same time, our experience tells that this could happen if we price the home at this price, uh, if the home, list the home at this price. Uh, I can give you a simple analogy, uh, and maybe you can perhaps relate with it, actually a couple of them, but uh, let's uh, say you are out in a grocery shop, uh, want to buy, say, bread, okay? Which bread would you buy? The one which has got the le the furthest away the expiration date, the newer bread, or the one which is a fresh shock is what you would like to buy, or which is going to stay alive. Anything which is kind of past the expiration date, would you buy it? You wouldn't. And why does that happen? It happens only because the bread remain on the shelf for so many days mm -hmm. would you like and i'm pretty sure you must have seen the stores saying that half price sale or so okay those are the breads which are selling at half price for the very simple reason that it did not sell in when they were in the good condition and people didn't find the value in it it was so, they were rejected <laughs> they were rejected <laughs> very simple rejected. yeah <laughs> be, be very straightforward they were rejected. Yep. Uh, same thing basically applies for anything. If things have to sell, you have to have it as a right price. Irrespect, and this was one of the analogies that my coach had told me, that mm -hmm. even if you have 
a dancing girl outside the home outside the st- uh, the grocery store and do whatever you want to do they are not going to buy the milk at 10 bucks a gallon where everywhere else the milk is selling at 3 bucks a gallon right. all right so right. no matter so that is basically relating to marketing no matter what kind of a marketing we do irrespective of anything the house will sell within xyz pricing only right our job is to make sure we market it in a way where you get slightly above the market value which eventually will help you if you want to sell it on your own you are likely to get about 10 to 15 grand less and in fact that this is an old uh, statistics nowadays it's roughly about 25 to 30 grand less mm-hmm. uh irrespective of how much you pay the commission to the real estate agent right so my strategy when i go and meet the seller this is my recommended price and then i have a little chart joking guys said that if the home stays on market this is the price or alternately if you want to sell the home uh 3 months down the road this is the price if you want to sell the home 6 months down the road this is the price mm-hmm. and be prepared for it that the second and third level of price would be much lower than the first level of price right right okay cool yeah so the other thing i want to talk about and like i said i want to talk about this so the sellers understand and the buyers understand and the sellers can be a buyer because most sellers sell and move up or move down when they go someplace else so let's say the price is right price is right right you're the seller or let's i'm the seller and you're the agent and you priced it right you know what the homes are selling for a million dollars and i'm going to price my home at a million dollars so when it comes to marketing how crucial is that because when we look at the report remember the report i read out that in other words the market did not accept the marketing effort and the price that's what the um agents control right or the or the sellers control so what kind of marketing effort is needed to sell a house or what so can we talk about that because sometimes sure. it's the marketing and oh, what yeah. agents the experienced agents what kind of marketing they do and then the newbies or the people who have low budget what do they do and do you see a difference so that they understand uh, actually that reminds me of a very good incident uh, my colleague uh, listed a home uh, at xyz price which was higher than the market price and uh, two days into Uh, the listing i got a call from the seller saying that praful can you take it over and i said it, it's all right she she's a, you know she does a good job and all and then he says that well did you take a look at the listings she came up with her iphone took the pictures and put it in mls hmm. now think of it as a negative impact the home has because an agent goes to the house takes a picture with the iphone without even telling them that oh can you move this from here to here in fact oh. i could see the sink full of utensils all right so okay. think of it this way where do we come uh, into the picture our suggestions are obviously i wouldn't even take the pictures without uh, having the home staged i would love to because that's where the money goes mm-hmm. uh the second thing is professional pictures the third thing not limiting that to just the professional pictures nowadays video tours uh, in fact a few of my listings are also have the video tours uh, which i used to have it on my youtube channel mm-hmm. uh, the fourth thing next level now using the 3d photography there are so many tools available mm-hmm. in fact many of the cameras can capture the 3d uh, photography uh and now coming to the next level which is the current market is the drone photography all right, right. Uh, and and i'm just thinking what will be the next okay uh, yeah. i mean i'm just thinking one more advanced way is the talking house uh, again i the talking house concept is way back right. uh, when if you dial the number and you you the you'll get the description of the house uh, so those are the things but now i'm talking about talking houses with the video that right. hey this is my room and blah, right. blah, blah. Yeah. so there's no end to marketing and working with a professional will help you market your home so well that 
you will have a 30 time more exposure, if not more, at least 30 times more exposure than what it would be otherwise. And I want to add something to that. Oh, and sure, sure, definitely. Point, what I want to add to this, a lot of sellers may say, you know what, my house is nice, it's good, and I've sold million, two million, three million homes, and they look really great, right? But sometimes you need the staging because you might have things that don't match. Your decor may not match because you, I like red sofa, but the buyers won't like it. Or you might have personal items on the wall, your grandkids or your kids, Very you true. Know, or, or your religious, if you're into religion, you have pictures of some religion. So I think when, when agents or, or realtors recommend that you do staging or decor, it's to kind of make everything in one theme, a color theme or a, a flow of things. You can't have an old Roman sofa going with the contemporary chandelier, you know, lighting and all that. So we try to make it together. Because as I mentioned earlier, most of the buyers, 95% or more, look at the videos, tours, uh, drone tours first. If they don't like it, they're out of there. So that's why it's very important. So even though your house may look very nice and all that, we're just trying to make it all match. And just like when a lady dresses up, you know, yes. for a wedding, everything has to match. You know, they got the lipsticks and the earrings and the necklace, everything matches. Not that she's not pretty, but when you make that, she becomes elegant. So we want to make those homes elegant so you get the maximum price. You will sell that home without staging, but with staging, with the elegance, with the extra marketing, instead of a million, we could get you a million and 50,000. That's our job, right? So that's one thing I want to mention to you. Sure. But moving on, I want to discuss two things and I want to get So through. before you go there, I'll just uh, add the stats. Mm -hmm. uh, the stage home sells at about 2% over the non-stage home. Think of it this way. Your realtor professional is going to spend money on staging, or maybe you can have some kind of an arrangement, but think of it on a million dollar home, getting 2% more, around 20,000 more, whereas the cost of the staging would be 3,000. Mm -hmm. Always think as how you can monetize certain situations, how you can get more money by doing this. Uh, again, you know, obviously there's so many other things so like, you know, uh, fixing up the bathroom and this yeah. and that, but that's right. for the different uh, show. Great. Got it. Okay. Well, we're approaching an hour, but I hope you have 10, 15 more minutes or so we can discuss two things I want to discuss. I mean, there's a lot of things we can discuss, sure. but these two things I want to discuss because they are important. We've talked about the price and the condition. But I know that one of the reasons, and we will discuss two things, and then we'll call it a day. One thing I want to discuss is that sometimes the house is priced right. It's marketed right. It's at the right location. It's the right condition. But it does not sell because here's a, the research done. Lack of flexibility in showings or negotiations. So I want to discuss mm -hmm. that. And then the second thing I want to discuss that, and we don't take a lot of time, just want to discuss that, is that California doesn't matter. I can sell whenever. I can sell in January, February, December, August. We don't have snow and we don't have heat. But in certain areas, Boston, where you are, mm -hmm. or uh, Maryland or Rhode Island, you know, I'm not going to list my house in freezing cold. So the second thing I want to discuss is what time of the year and is timing important in marketing and selling. But before that, let's talk about the flexibility in showing or restrictions in showing is a cause of not selling. I'll let you handle that or explain to the buyers and sellers watching. Uh, funny that you brought it up. Uh, when I listed a home for my, for my friend compliant, uh, I looked at the home. Uh, he, he was pretty patient and listened to me on each and everything. And I was, I'm so glad that, and so blessed also that I have such clients. Um, he had X number of an expectation, and I said, let's just list it at this price. Very likely, we will overshoot your expectation, number one. Number two, your home is a pretty good location, and you will be virtually disturbed, perhaps, uh, from the clients to show the home at X, Y, Z time, this, 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 this. So I told him, this weekend, give it to me, go staycation, 
go to the nearest uh, hotel, spend time with family, go to the swimming pool or wherever you want to go. I will take care of your home. And to my surprise, we had uh, roughly about uh, 100 people showed up at the open house. Obviously, the home was sold in no time, 100,000 over asking, mm -hmm. approximately 100,000 over asking. Right. Uh, and, and there were some of them who sh saw the home four times also. Uh, so coming back to the original point, flexibility in showing is very, very, very important. The moment you decide this to sell the home, we stage it, we market it, give us time, give us time so that our marketing efforts do have the returns. I do remember one of them also was tenant occupied and I had tough time getting it sold because they said, oh, you can't see it at this time. We need 48 hours of advance notice, this, that. Now think of it in this fast moving market. Who is going to wait for 48 hours just to preview the home and then take the decision? Mm -hmm. Right. So if possible, remove all the restrictions associated with the showing and make sure your home, which is so beautiful now after the staging, open to the market, let all the buyers stop by. In fact, the one which I had, I had to reduce the time of showing for just 15 minutes. We usually allow the buyers to come take a look at good home for about 30 minutes plus. But I had to say that, well, 15 minutes and move on to the next one. So right. that's my, my take on uh, uh, showing flexibility. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, today buyers are different. You know, we are at a, what do you call Facebook, social media world. We want instant answers. If I yes. call somebody or somebody calls me, they want instant answer. If I order something, I want Amazon to drop it off at my house mm. right away, right? Similarly, when a buyer calls us, an agent, and I call you, Praful, hey, you have a listing, and hey, Praful, can I show a house Saturday at 2 o'clock? And you go, no, 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 my seller has a family coming. They want to do a barbecue. That doesn't work because I have an out-of-town buyer. He's yeah. flying in from Chicago. He's here for Friday and Saturday. He's got to leave. Or, you know, um, I may have a hot buyer. He needs to see Saturday because he's got three homes and he's going to write offers on one or two. And if I don't get to show your home, you're out of there. I'm going to write an offer on the other one. So it's very critical. Today, we are in the five years ago, 10 years ago, we're all in a time crunch. Social media has changed our thinking. COVID has changed our thinking. It's now, now, now. I want food. I want it right now. I want Amazon. I want it shipped right now. I'm not going to wait a week. I want to see the house right now. I'm here. So I'm not saying, hey, we're going to call you and come right away, but be flexible. Don't be restrictive. You know. So that, that's a key. And actually, one more point regarding that. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I'm talking about the same listing where I had 100 showings. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason was simple. It was marketed so well on social media with 3D yeah. tools, drone tools and everything. Mm -hmm. Think of it as people had already visualized it, how that home looks like. With all these pictures, all the YouTube uh, videos, mm -hmm. all the 3D tools, and now the brain was kind of ready to take a personal look at it and take a decision. And we had, I think, 13 offers on that home. Wow. And all of them, all of them were above asking, a lot above mm -hmm. asking. Right. All right. So remember, showing in person definitely must be there. But at the same time, make it showing as if they are seeing it in person when they are on their computer. Right, right. Okay. So let's go back to the next topic I'm going to talk about. That'll be your last topic, but we're open to question. Um, and feel free to ask any questions if you're live or after the recording, uh, put some questions on. I want to talk about the market conditions. And the reason I brought that up is because I have a mastermind group, like we have a group. I have another group that I talked with. This was two years ago. I was talking to this agent. She was in the East Coast. And I won't mention the cities just for privacy and all that. She said that she listed a house which was expired. And she used to call the expired sellers like I used to. And she called this seller um, in, in uh, 
February, March, and she got the listing and she sold it within two weeks. Sure. So I asked her what happened. So it was a combination of things. First of all, it was in the East Coast. It was very cold and snowy. They listed it in October, November, and they priced the house thirty, forty thousand dollars higher. As if it's in uh, summer. As so if it's selling in summer. Number one, it was a higher price. It was winter time. They still got showings because this agent worked really hard. They got showings even during this winter time, snow time. I guess you guys have to clean the driveway or clean the roof, take out the snow. They had showings, but no offers. When the listing canceled or what we say expired, this agent called the seller and said, hey, I can sell your home within 30 days. I can get you a price, blah, blah, blah. It was February. She dropped the price to the market value. Later, it was $400,000. And the previous, it was four thirty. It was $400,000. She staged it. She cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, there was no snow. It sold in 30 days. Yep. So, so seasonal effects are there always. Right. That's true. So even in snow, houses will sell, but you got to price it right, right? So, Correct, yeah. Do you want to elaborate yeah. on that somewhere? Because you're in Boston. I mean, I have no experience yes. on that, but you do it all the time. So tell yeah. us some of the challenges in winter, you know, or, or windy conditions or whatever. So you got a good point. Uh, uh, contrary to popular belief that in Northeast, where I am, Boston and I'm in, I'm in Metro Boston. The homes don't sell uh, or, you know, it's very difficult to sell the home. Uh, and my answer to that would be always go back to the most important part. And that is price. One needs to price the home in such a way that you drive the traffic to the home and make sure the home sells. Yes, always ready for showing so your driveway must be clean or at least the walkway to the house is clean uh, have some booties so that people don't wear uh, don't go with the shoes in it wear the booties on it keep, so that the house is kept clean uh, keep the house at pretty good temperature have some kind of a cinnamon cookie smell going on so that you feel Ooh, fresh and, <laughs> and, and make sure that they do not, the potential buyers do not even get a single hint of winter. It could be snowing outside crazily, but make sure when they are in the house, they feel that same environment, which mm -hmm. they would expect to see in their own future home. Yes, there are seasonal effects and I do see, uh, you know, it does impact slightly here and there, but again, uh, not, to the extent of about 10% or so is what I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. people assume that, oh, the sales will be plummeted. Uh, uh, my home will not sell, never sell in December and all. No, nope. right. right. uh, everything eventually goes back to the only point and that is price. price so right. if we have to summarize the whole session, I would say the only reason why homes don't sell is it's not price right as per the condition and the location of the home. Correct. That's the number one reason. There's other reasons, like we mentioned. Yeah. Number one is price. Most here. important right. reason is the price. Yeah. The price. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're not saying that because we as agents want to bring the price down so we can sell it. As agents, as a seller's agent, there's two sides to seller's agent and a buyer's agent. If I'm a buyer's agent, my goal, if you're my buyer, is to get you as less a price as possible. Right. But if I'm a listing agent, then my goal is to get you, the seller, as high of the price as possible for two things. One, that's my duty and my job to get you the higher price. But if I get you a higher price, I'm going to make more money. And I want to make more money because these days we spend for the marketing. In the old days, they paid for staging. They paid for photography. Now we have to do professional photography. And we're talking lots of pictures. Sometimes oh, yeah. we take pictures dawn and dusk and daytime. So there's three kinds of pictures. Then we do staging, so like sellers want us to pay. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of things. In yeah. fact, there's some agents, what they've started doing is they pay up front. They pay for everything up front, including <clears throat> curb appeal and yard trimming and all that. And of course they charge them that, but they charge that in escrow because the seller may say, look, I've been here 30 years, I don't have any money. 
it's going to take me fifteen thousand dollars to clean this up the yard the trim the paint so a lot of agents pay that up front and have an agreement that will pay through escrow but if the escrow does not close then you're going to pay me that so there's a lot of effort put into it so you know marketing condition price it's all important we as agents want to give you the maximum price um so we make more money so we can also pay for the staging and the photographing a lot of expense not counting our time you know doing those open houses it's an all-day seven-hour job and people think oh you did open house from 12 to 4 but there's research to be done there's science to be put out there's flyers to be made there's preparation etc so it's a whole day job so our time is valuable as well you know so anyway so so in, in conclusion, is there something else you want to talk about? One, maybe one point that we've not talked about that you want to let the sellers know why home may expire or cancel. Uh, so also the buyers know if they're watching and why homes expire, you know, so. Uh, this is kind of, uh, I would say, just be with your professional real estate agent. Uh, listen to them, listen to their advice. Think of it this way, we as real estate professionals and you as seller who's going to hire us have one common goal. We are friends in this project and we are not going to, you know, uh, say why is that, why, why this things happen, why these things didn't happen. Things happen sometimes, some buyers come, go back, they make an offer, low offer, trust me, we cannot control the law offer because right. it's the buyer's job. So don't think that because some buyer made a very low offer means the value of your home is so low. We have done all the homework before putting your home on market. So remember, we are friends and we have one common goal, which we perhaps didn't even talk about so far in the discussion that our mission is same. We want to get the maximum price for your home. And again, that's me again, that uh, right. what commission I earn is kind of secondary. Right. I still want to, I, again, you know, my only goal would remain above and everything else above is uh, to make sure that I provide you the fullest possible service when you're selling the home. Great, great. I want to add something to that since you mentioned pricing and commission. Yeah. What the sellers have to understand and the buyers is that, you know, we all hear, oh, you just want to sell the home cheap because you make a commission. But the thing is, as I mentioned earlier, who's going to sign the contract? The yep. seller is going to sign the contract. We respect the sellers. Sellers are not dumb. If the yep. seller wanted a million dollars and the comps are a million dollars, they're not going to sell the house unless they get a million dollars. We totally understand that. That's why we tell the sellers to price it at market value because there's no way I can sell for 900 if the market value is a million dollars because sellers are not dumb. They're not going to sign that. Number one, Correct. sellers call has the ultimate call. But True. as agents, we do the recommendation of curb appeal and touch up paints and change the light bulbs and clean the carpet and deep clean and stage because we want to get you the extra price. Okay. We put so much effort into it while we're talking to you, while we're, we're on the marketing phase, while we are in the escrow phase, there's inspection, there's appraisals, there's disclosures, and during the closing, because sellers do so much, the seller's agent do so much work because they want to get paid, right? We don't get paid if you don't work at all this and don't close the deal. So we want to make sure the deal closes at the same time, the seller signs the contract on the last day and say, you know what? Thank you, Praful. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, realtor. I got my million dollars. You got me a buyer. I'm going to sign the closing because unless they sign that, number one, the buyers don't get the house and the buyers really want the house. But then the buyer's agent and the seller agents don't get paid if you don't work hard. So our goal is to get you satisfaction, not only in the price, but in the closing. And there's so much effort to be done. And we always get the wraparound that, oh, you guys want to sell it cheap so you can make a commission. Sellers are not done. They're not going to sign that contract. Yeah. So I want to leave with that. You know. So. Very, very true. In fact, uh, I have a list of 
129 things which we do as a sales agent yeah okay yeah. where it starts from the day we meet the seller so again yeah, yeah. that was pretty decent and i hope uh, we have conveyed the message to the seller that irrespective of the market they are in it's always good to work with professionals like us great cool and thanks for coming on this channel if yeah, you're thanks. watching live or if you're watching the recording please make comments please subscribe if you have any questions in the boston area uh, i will have the information for perful and his email uh, in the description you can always contact me i'm in orange county but if you're in texas or montana or idaho and if you're looking for a experienced professional real estate agent whether you're buying or selling or selling and buying we have a database between me and Profool have a database of professional agents we've been working at this for 25 years so we have a great database we will refer you to a right agent who will guide you and help you whether you just want information or guidance not that you want to list your home any information you have let us know we're here to help you so thanks for watching again i have these live channels every week on mondays please join me every week and it'll always always be on my youtube channel again thanks Profool from boston and Thank you, sir. Uh, let's do this again. Sure. Let's try to keep it together. Okay. Thanks, Thanks a okay. lot. Appreciate Sorry it. Now. Okay.